got myself another car. Brought to you by Refit Studios, which is a media and lifestyle brand founded on nonconformity. There is a new merchandise drop with a couple of new designs and sticker packs on the website, along with a new self-care line coming out called Haku Supply. All the information will be in the description below, and you can follow the Instagram page at Refit Studios for updates. Would you look at that? <laughs> this, guys, is my brand new, well used, 2011 328 xi so it's a bmw 3 series with the x drive aka all-wheel drive and i picked this up on january 25th which is pretty crazy because the 25th is exactly the same day i got my other car last year so it's been exactly one year later that i picked up another bmw and I still have the F32. I didn't sell that, guys. Um, I still have it. I'll be having both cars for different purposes, which I'll get into later in this video. But before I talk about why I got this car, I do want to show you guys all the features and the little quirks about it. And this is actually the first ever BMW I've ever driven in my entire life. And since then, it caused me to fall in love with the brand completely. And so that's why I wanted to pay homage and with my second car to get that exact car the exact model is not the one that i drove but it's the same model as the one i drove i bought this car used and it has a couple of mods from the previous owner so yeah let's go take a look at the outside four-door sedan all-wheel drive so then you know it's good for the winter season over here we have these carbon fiber mirror caps uh, these are not real carbon it looks like abs plastic just kind of slapped on there but it does add a nice tasteful touch i think the most noticeable thing which i should have talked about first was this roof rack um, I believe it's an actual BMW one because it has a logo on here, unless he just put that on himself. Uh, Yakima, you know, wind cover screen for aerodynamics, along with a bike rack. I think I might take off this rail piece over here, but keep this and maybe switch it out for like a cargo box because I like that aesthetic. In terms of the windows, they are tinted. Um, it came with 20% all around, but I did change the fronts to 50 on the side and 50 on the windshield. It was just a little bit too dark and I did get pulled over the second day of ownership with the darker tints. So I had to make it a little bit brighter. We have these aftermarket LED side turn signals. So they're smoked out, which looks really, really good along with the black body. We have the stock wheels on here, which I will be changing out because look at the condition of it. All the paint is peeling up. Um, he has the aftermarket stud conversion and he has spacers in here, um, slotted and drilled rotors. So if you guys look real carefully, you can see the rotors actually have holes in them and the little slit that helps with the braking performance with the, uh, the cooling performance of it stock calipers that are painted blue. I'm going to change the colors of that myself. Front bumper is also aftermarket. This is the E90 or E92 style M3 bumper conversion. It also has the fog light inserts, which is not on the real M3, but um, I might keep those because I actually like the way they look on this car. We have a real carbon fiber lip, but it actually cracked over here. So I can repair that. I can just sand it down. It's not cracked all the way, which is good. I can feel that the crack kind of stops midway. So sand it down, put some epoxy resin on it. Moving on to the backside. Uh, we also have these fake carbon spats or winglets on the side, which kind of gives off that flare look, which makes it look pretty sick and aggressive. Stock OEM bumper, I might change that out to either the M Sport or the M3 style. The exhaust over here is using the stock tips, but it is fully straight pipe. It has a muffler and resonator delete. So it has a nice sort of growl to it, but it's not too loud, which is what I like. Um, the F32 is catless, so that car is overkill loud, which I like, but not as a daily. I think this spoiler is OEM because it is paint matched, unless it's not. Oh, it's not paint matched. So this might be aftermarket actually, but I will be taking this off and putting a bigger carbon one on. I'm not going to put a wing on here like the other car because I think it's a little too crazy looking. Now moving on to the interior. Door card is the sort of oyster color tone. The interior does have this carbon fiber, matte carbon fiber wrap actually on here that the previous owner did. Uh, the start stop button is a little bit worn out, so I gotta replace this. I do wanna take off this carbon fiber wrap on a trim and replace it with like a gloss carbon, like actual like piece that goes in here or Alcantara, mainly because this wrap job isn't great. You know, like it's cut in all sorts of different areas, the seams, the corners all peeling up. So I gotta get that done. This was actually aftermarket. Um, it's an original part, but it's been swapped out from the previous owner, but this has been switched out to the M Sport style. 
um, so it is a lot nicer the bolsters are better but the condition of this wheel is very worn down so I do want to change this out to either like a fully custom Alcantara or maybe carbon uh, steering wheel in the future these are all the stock seats everything in here is pretty much stock in the inside it is kind of beat up a little bit you know there's like pen marks and scrapes on it but I mean it's a old car the 2011 what is that like 12 year old car so you're gonna see you know some wear and tear so before I talk about why I got this car I want to show you guys a couple of the things that I need to get fixed on here because this car is used so it's not perfect some things are broken like this switch over here this cover is coming off like I can literally pull the whole switch off the rear door it opens from the outside on the left side but this part doesn't work so when the door closes you can't come out those are the two like mechanical or most noticeable things that are wrong with the car um, it just needs some normal maintenance stuff like it needs new spark plugs it definitely needs new tires because you know this tread wear is already worn down pretty badly I already ordered new rims and new tires for this car I'm not gonna go too crazy with this build I'm just gonna do some tasteful small little mods like, you know like stuff like the headlights I gotta restore that as well so there's really nothing mechanically broken besides the door I talked about all this cosmetic stuff but look under the hood look at that beautiful inline 6 NA no turbos in this car it has a megan racing strut bar for the suspension bc racing coilovers on this car so it's fully adjustable in so many different ways the dampening settings the raising it or lowering it we also have a cold air intake from ingen over here so it's not full bolt-on it still has you know the catalytic converters on it's not tuned i did actually adjust the coilovers on the first day i got the car because it was too low like this lip it was literally like one inch off the ground. I raised it about an inch and a half. Still scrapes here and there, but not too bad. I do like the low ride height. I'm used to that. These coilovers do kind of ride a little stiff, but I think I just have to adjust the dampening settings. But yeah, guys, that is all the performance mods on this car. It's not super quick. This car is nowhere close to how quick the F32 is, but it does drive pretty well and very smooth. Nothing wrong with that. And this is to all of the E9X owners out there. That's a huge flex for people who own this generation of car. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. For this generation of BMWs, these cup holders break all the time. So this going in, coming out for the cup holder, I'd say 80% of cars, this is broken. Like it doesn't come out. So now I want to briefly talk about why I got this car. So it was a goal of mine to get a second car this year, but I didn't expect to get it so soon. I was aiming mainly around like the end of summer or early fall. But the reason why I got it so quickly and so early now in January is because I stumbled across this out of nowhere. And what happened was my friend actually bought a Beamer and then he went back to the dealership with me to go like get some things done. And when I went there, this car was sitting in the lot that just came in for a trade-in and it wasn't even listed on sale yet. It wasn't on the website. It wasn't like the photos haven't even been taken by the dealer to be listed. Long story short, I'm like, hey, look, I like this. How much is it? Let's talk about the numbers and I'll take it. It's not like I blindly bought it though, you know, like I knew what I was getting myself into because I'm very familiar with this chassis, you know, and I wasn't looking for an E90 at all. I was actually looking into getting like an Alfa Romeo Giulia. When I say second car, what I was looking for was actually a daily driver. I've been daily driving the F32 and it's been a great car. I've been driving it every single day for a year now. I put like 17,000 miles on that in a year. As I started modifying that car and, you know, putting full bolt on, tuning it, doing crazy things with it, completely stripping the interior, having no airbag, that car started to become less comfortable to drive, you know, especially for what I needed it for. I do Uber Eats as, you know, a big part of my hustle and I'm constantly driving. And that car was not only too low, it was uncomfortable, it was too stiff. It was like a race car, you know, and driving that car around is fun, but not as a daily. It was impractical. I didn't really have any rear seat space. You know, people every time who needed to sit in my car would just cram in the back. So I really wanted to get a daily car that at least had four doors and was reliable, that, you know, still looked nice and performed well. I don't want to get like a hoopty, you know, because I need the car to be able to actually last. I needed something that had a little bit more power. So, you know, I can do a lot of city driving. And something that has good style because I want to make a build out of it and I want to make content because it's also like an investment. I don't want to spend money on a car and get nothing out of it, right? This car came up, it had all the requirements I was looking for, for a price I was actually pretty surprised about because my budget for a second car was around a 20-30k mark. This one only a, like a fraction of that. So even though it's high mileage, I'm very familiar with this chassis, with this motor, and I know that this car is going to last. These N52s or M51s, because it's a still live model, is very, very reliable. It doesn't have turbos in it like the other car. So it's not as fast, but 
it's reliable. You know, it's not like you have all these extra things that can break. I do have another job though that's starting in like a week, but I'm still gonna be doing Uber on the sides if I have the time, which is why, you know, I still needed to get something that's, you know, gonna last. Literally crazy how the day I got this was the same day I got my other car. That was not planned. It just happened that way. So yeah, guys, this is my new car. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.